Welcome to Apostolic Archive. We have gathered many wonderful sermons through the years and we have decided to share them with the world. We hope you enjoy. Please subscribe to our channel. Please like the video and comment with something you take away from this message. Also, hit the bell below so you can receive an update as soon as we upload new content. Blessings. To be able to finish this, and I'd like to try to finish it. I'd like to try to do it one day, but that's not going to work out. But in Mark, the fourth chapter, there is a drama of the disciples of Jesus. These disciples in this drama are caught in a storm. And for the next two or three chapel services that I have, I would like to talk to you about storms. And the reason is, is because everybody has storms in their life. Everybody has storms in their life. Somebody said, humorously speaking, you know you're going to have a storm when your horn gets stuck and you're behind a Hells Angels motorcycle gang. You're going to have a stormy day. Somebody else said, you know you're going to have a stormy day when you call suicide prevention and they put you on hold. You're going to have a stormy day. But I promise you, you'll learn more about God in the storms I said, you'll learn more about God in the storms than you'll ever learn on dry ground. Amen. An old poet said this. He said, I walked a mile with pleasure and chatted all the way. But I was none the wiser with all she had to say. Then I walked a mile with sorrow and not a word, said she. But oh, the things I learned when sorrow walked with me. I think the songwriter sort of put it all together when he wrote that song, Through It All. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Mark 4, verse 35. The same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. When they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hindest part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this? My, my. What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? And I want to preach to you in segments on that thought. What manner of man is this? You can be seated. This is actually a drama of couplets. You can see it real easy. There's a storm and there's a calm. You've got two tremendous questions that couple themselves together that are asked by the disciples. One of these is out of fear. We saw it. Master, carest thou not that we perish? And then the other question comes from verse 41 because it says they feared exceedingly one to another and said, what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? So you've got two questions there. And this is a story, I believe, that Jesus intended for us to draw some of these very principles out of. I know it was an actual drama and happening in life. But I believe that the Lord in his infinite wisdom saw what we would get out of things like this. It's a story, I believe, that can speak to us about troubles and trials, about afflictions, about problems, about pressures, all of these types of things. Because he knows that we face problems and pressures and troubles and trials and afflictions. He knows that we go through great and heavy things within our lives. There are people today within our churches 
that have worked for companies for 20 or 30 years, then all of a sudden to just be told that that company doesn't exist anymore, that their retirement is gone, that's a trial. That's a storm. Or when the doctor walks out and shakes his head and says, I'm sorry. We've done all we can do. We can't do anymore. That's a storm. That's a storm. And I believe that this passage of Scripture can give us direction regarding those types of things. How about mental discard? How about fragmented relationships? How about difficulties in the family? All these types of things, the betrayal of a friend even. All of these types of things are storms within our lives. And yet the Word of God gives us answers to these types of things. Now, we can cause storms in our lives because of our own ignorance. Storms can come, you know, as a result of the devil. Job didn't know that the Lord and the devil were having a powwow in heaven and that his life was the battlefield. You can't have storms because God imposes things upon us or lets things be imposed upon us. But we can have storms in life also just simply because of our ignorance. You know, sometimes it's almost a mixture. I don't know if it's me. I don't know if it's God. I don't know if it's the devil. Ignorance can play a big part sometimes. You know, it's about like the two fellows that were working in the hole and their boss was up there on the top. And they got to talking down there in that hole. And they said, I wonder why we're down here and he's up there. And the fellow said, I don't know. He said, won't you go ask him? He said, I think I will. So he walked up the ladder and he said, you know, we were just talking down there. How come we're down here and you're up here? And the boss said, ignorance. He said, ignorance. He said, yeah, ignorance. He said, I don't understand. He said, come over here to this tree. And he said, I'll explain it to you. He said, hit my hand. He said, hit your hand. He said, yeah, just hit my hand. So that fellow drawed back. And boy, just as he swung, that fellow moved his hand. And he just plowed his knuckles into that old tree. He came back and they were bloody. He said, ignorance. So the fellow didn't say anything. He just walked back down the ladder. And he was real quiet. And the fellow said, well, did you learn why we're down here and he's up there? I said, yeah. I said, well, what is it? I said, ignorance. I said, ignorance? Yeah, ignorance. He said, I don't understand. He said, would you explain to me? He said, sure. Hit my hand. <laughs> ignorance. Ignorance. That's the way we are sometimes. We get our own selves in trouble. We get ourselves in storms. We cause our own problems. You know, like the little girl that pushed her little brother down in the mud, slapped him, hit him, cussed him, called him a bad name, and he ran off to the house. His daddy walked out with him and spoke to his daughter and said, What did you do? He said, Daddy said, I pushed him down in the mud. So I slapped him and I hit him and I, I cussed him and I called him a bad name. And the daddy said, that's the devil that made you do that. And she said, daddy, she said, May, maybe the devil made me push him down in the mud. And maybe the devil made me slap him and hit him. And maybe the devil made me call him a bad name. But daddy, I, I thought of cussing all on my own. That was mine. You know, sometimes we get things mixed up. We blame things on God that's not God's problem. We blame things on, on the devil that really is not the devil's problem. Sometimes it's just us. And hey, sometimes you can be in the storm and be right smack in the middle of God's will. I mean right in the middle. Jesus made the statement. He said, hey, let's go to the other side. Get in the ship with me. Let's go over the other side. The disciples got into the boat. You can't tell me that they weren't right in the middle of the will of God. They were. They were right there. And I want you to know, 
you're going to face trials. I am going to face trials. And one of the reasons we're going to face trials is because God desires to build strong men and women into his image so that he can pour himself into them because God does have a divine purpose for each one of us. He really does. He has a divine purpose for us. I want you to know if storms were an indication of being out of the will of God, Paul really had a problem. Believe me, because 90% of the time, that man was in trouble. That man had problems. But you know what he said? Listen, the things that have happened unto me have happened unto me for the furtherance of the gospel. I've been in the will of God for the furtherance of the gospel of God. Hey, these disciples here that we just read about in Mark, the fourth chapter, these disciples didn't do anything wrong. I mean, if anything, they were right where Jesus had told them to be. He told them, get into the boat. Let's go over to the other side. Hey, the Lord never promised you that you were going to have blue skies all the time in your life. God never promised you that, that you were going to have calm seas and you, were going, you weren't going to have any problems. Uh, you weren't going to have any troubles or trials. But there's one thing that he did promise, and that is, Lo, I am with thee always, even unto the end of the world. Now, I can think of three things that a storm could be for. I call this CPR. You know, in the medical world, that stands for cardiopulmonary resuscitation. But I think there's a lot of CPR in storms. There's a lot of C, correction. God wants to bend me. God wants to mold me. God wants to help me. He wants to discipline me. There's a lot of C. There is a lot of perfection. That is, he wants to mature me. He wants to mature me. And there's a lot of revelation. God wants me to see something that I have never seen before. And these disciples, I tell you, saw something that they had never seen before. That's why they said, what manner of a man? is this. Friend, they learned something in this storm. In fact, you know what they learned in this storm? They probably learned a lot of things, but one of the things that they learned, and by the time this message is through, we will learn it too one more time in another beautiful way. They learned the beautiful humanity and deity of our Lord Jesus Christ. At one moment, there he is in the back of the boat, sleeping, pure humanity, and at another moment, he stands on the bow of the boat and says, Peace, be still, and in all of his deity. At one moment, he is sympathizing with them, and in the next moment, he's right on the bow of their boat solving their problem. What manner of a man is this? And I'm afraid a lot of times we too, like the disciples, don't really have the revelation of who Jesus Christ is for us in our everyday walk in life like we really need to have. But I want you to know, these disciples here in this story got the revelation, friend. He sent them CPR. They got some correction. They got some perfection. But they got some revelation because they cried out, What manner of a man is this. There's a lot of revelation that we can learn out of God's word. First of all, he had answered their cries because they went to the back of the boat and they said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Do you really care? Do you sympathize with us at all? And then he solved their problems because they actually saw in that moment the dual nature of Jesus Christ. In the back of the boat, they saw his humanity. In the front of the boat, they saw his deity. In the back of the boat, 
they learned that he would awake and would sympathize. In the front of the boat, he learned that he could step forth and he could solve their problem. I want you to know if he's going to be God to us, then he has to be able to solve our problem. He has got to be a man, however, if he's going to be a sympathizer with me. And that's what they learned. They learned the God-man. They were able to put it all together and see this in a revelation like they had never seen this before. In the back of the boat, he's sympathizing with me. In the front of the boat, he is solving my problem. And do you know what gospel means? It actually means good news. That's what the word gospel means, is good news. And friend, when I learn that he is not only my solver, but he's my sympathizer. When he's not only my sympathizer, but he's my solver. That's good news. That's good news. Because he sympathizes with me. As God, he stood in the front of the boat, and he spoke to those angry waves and said, Peace be still. That was a holy hush that came over those seas. And they learned that he was the sympathizer and the solver of their life. You see, the reason that the gospel is the good news is because he's not only God, but he's man. He was made like unto his brethren. Martin Luther made the statement. He said, no preacher should preach the gospel to he has, until he has a working knowledge of the book of Romans. Because when you start out in the book of Romans, you see exactly what I'm talking about here. Paul, a slave of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated under the gospel of God, which he afore had promised by the prophets in all his holy scriptures, concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, there's his humanity, and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness, there's his deity. Paul started out right in the book of Romans showing the humanity and the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. In both places, you see the beauty of it. You see, if it can be established that he is both God and man, that's good news. Because as man, he sympathizes with me. As God, he solves my problems. James Erwin walked on the moon many years ago. A couple of years ago, he was addressing a religious body in Washington, D.C. And he stood up to address that body, and his first words were, while I was walking on the moon. You think that got their attention? While I was walking on the moon. He went on to tell them that while he was walking and working on the moon, he stopped all of a sudden and saw one of the most beautiful things, something only a very few eyes have seen, and that is the earth come up over the horizon of the moon. He stopped and looked and said, Oh, God, how beautiful. He said there was something that flooded him. And his, he said within his being, he said, God, this has got to be the greatest day in all of humanity. This has got to be the greatest day. A man walking on the moon. And he said all of a sudden, a little boy spoke to him and said, Jim, this is a great day, but it's not the greatest. The greatest day Jim was not when I or when you, man, walked on the moon. But the greatest day was when I, God, walked on the earth. What manner of man is this? And he went on to say, And Jim, the greatest day was not only when I walked in your earth, but when you opened your heart and I walked into your life. I want you to know, as man, he sympathizes. As God, he is our solver. 
and they learned that that day. And we need to get a revelation of that all over again. And that is, uh, He is my Lord, and He is my God. He is my sympathizer, and He is my solver. He is humanity, and He is deity. Oh, friend, what manner of a man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? He sympathizes with your problem. He understands where you're at. He knows where you are. Let me, let me, let me make one more statement and I'll finish. We'll pick it up later. The size of the sun in comparison to the earth is just astronomically incredible. Incredible. If I was to take a quart jar and fill it up with rice, there would be about 10,000 kernels in it, I'm told. If I was to empty that and fill it up 140 times and then take all those kernels of 140 emptyings and compare it with one kernel of rice, that would be the size of the earth in comparison to the sun. 1,400,000 times larger than the earth. Who made it? The one in the back of the boat. Carest thou not that we perish? Yes, I care. I care. Peace, be still. He cares where you're at. He knows where you're at. He knows every hair that's numbered on your head. That wouldn't be difficult with me. But he knows right where you're at, friend. Brother Wyatt, he knows where you're at. He knows where you're at. And he cares. He's not just your sympathizer, but he's your solver. Oh, what manner, what manner of a man is this? Let's stand. Praise God. Let's worship Him. We love you, Jesus. Oh, we praise you. You're our Lord and our God. Oh, blessed be thy holy name for thy redemption among men. Thank you for my salvation, Lord. Thank you for my inheritance, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. You're coming for a redeemed people, for a holy people, a people that love you, a people that put you first. I want to serve you, Lord, and live for you with all of my heart and soul and mind and strength. You're my sympathizer and you're my solver. Praise the name of Jesus. God bless you.